Hey, Fran. Morning. So I saw your email this morning that you didn't get your link. Was it in junk mail? Because I got mine this morning. I got an email from Bob oh, and a text your sound's from Angel. Off. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Hold on. My sound's off. Okay. I got an email from Bob and a text from Angel, too, that they didn't get theirs. And I don't have anything in my spam folder. Huh. Mine came in at 7.02 a.m. and said your meeting starts in one hour. And I looked for my um, original one, one that I should have gotten a, a week ago, and I couldn't find it. I have uh, some already for the next ones for Old Webster and Crossroads. I already have those. Hmm. I don't know what the deal is. I'm looking to see. Okay, let's see. So, yeah, I got mine on February 24th, 1.37 p.m. It's kind of weird. Came, they all came in at the same time. So I got Old Orchard at 1.37. Yeah. I got Crossroads at 1.44. I got ARB at 1.45. I got Old Webster at 1.48. Huh. I did get one for Old Orchard at that same time with all of those, but it was not for this date. Okay. Well, we'll card. just have to remind everybody they should always, it should always be on the website. Right. And that's the link I sent out. Okay. That just means I'll have to move everybody over. Right. That's fine. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that's just odd. It's very odd. It's been like clockwork. Mm hmm huh okay yeah i was like wait a minute when i because when i clicked on this morning that says february okay hmm. that's an old one <laughs> yeah i there's so I don't many know. In, there's so many in here now it's way too many <laughs> i hear that kind of done more than kind of done i'm done <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I now have this like generic Zoom link that I can send out just for any meeting. I want to just suddenly like, oh, we need to talk. Okay, mm -hmm. let me send this. But I don't have a good place to put it. So I just have to keep going to my calendar to the last time I used it and sent it to someone and hey, copy and it, paste again? it again. Yeah. But you know what? I shouldn't complain. I mean, the, the amount of Zoom links that my 16 year old has. For school? Yes. Yeah, I know. So does my son. I'm like, oh my gosh. Except uh, I think next semester he'll have to be all online or in person for everything. <clears throat> I well, can right, see the writing on the wall. Right now they've got them. I think you've heard they, they've got them by alphabet, half in school in the mornings, half in school yeah. in the afternoons. So yeah, so she's asynchronous four mornings a week, in school four afternoons a week, virtual synchronous one morning a week, Wednesday afternoons off. Oh, it gets, well, and it gets worse because then you have to add in. So she did just make JV soccer. So oh, got add that in. <laughs> soccer practices each day. And then she's got a club softball team. So she's got club softball oh and uh, a new hitting coach because she's decided softball is the thing and she wants yeah. to play softball in college. So yeah, last night we went to get her 16th birthday present from my parents. They sent her money for a new bat. Oh, cool. I went and picked up her new bat. That is just amazing. Softball was my game. Played, played CYC all through. Mm -hmm. Got to high school when I was there. There was no softball team for oh girls. Oh, my God. That's and crazy. Yeah, I know. So, yeah. I, played, so I played field hockey. <laughs> hey. Which is nothing like, no, I had a stick in my hand. Well, I laughed because I she did end up... Um, she did basketball too this year. Mm -hmm. So she did basketball and then 
the basketball season was ending and JV wasn't done yet. So the JV coach asked her to play up for the last couple of weeks with JV basketball. So she got that done. And then we found out the JV basketball coach is the new JV soccer coach. Oh. So I was like, oh, well, that's good. <laughs> you already know them. So she's super excited. She's really like. That is so cool. Yeah. But yeah, they get out at 325 and soccer practice starts at 345. But I guess you're not supposed to use the locker room and there's no place you don't have lockers. So, so how do you change? I guess they just throw their shorts on in the bathroom. That'd be it. Yeah. And for a while there, when it was later, the tryouts were like at 4 and 4.15. She'd be dropped off here by her, her ride. And then I would turn around and drive her back to the school. Oh, okay. And Fortunately, she still hasn't taken her... Far. Well, she hasn't taken her driver's license test yet. She was delayed. She couldn't get her... her learner's permit because we were closed shut down sure so yeah i think she's she wants to go next week uh oh <laughs> she's, got a car. she's got a card sitting in front of the house well i gotta use that then Heck. i know i know kind of scary i know we had to gather all kinds of paperwork uh, yesterday because both my husband and my son needed to renew their license oh. and they had to get the real id thing mm -hmm. so one of the things is you have to they want a pay stub or a utility bill yeah well matthew doesn't have a pay stub mm -hmm. he's at school and of course none of the utilities are in his name so i'm going on the website what else well fortunately the bank statement yes Good man, like, you know, there's lots of 16 year olds that might not have all that stuff. That's what we used for Olivia. I think we used that same thing. Yeah. Trying to move. Oh, he should be moving over. I just tried to move Bob over. Making sure I got. There he is. All right, I'm getting a text from Angel. It's okay, I'm moving Joe over. And at least I'm at my computer. So if someone does email me or call my phone, I'll be able to move them. Take oh yeah, that's you. cool. You were upstairs, you wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> okay, Angel's got it. <coughs> she should be on soon. Awesome. Morning. 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 Morning, Beth. <clears throat> Abby. Moving Abby over. Moving Angel over. Good morning. Good morning. Hola. <clears throat> Thank you, Fran. You're welcome. We can't figure out why I got my reminder an hour ago, but no one else seemed to. Hey, I got Fran's uh, email. You should have gotten a reminder at 7 a.m. that said, here's the link. And it would be your direct oh. link, so you wouldn't have to be moved <clears throat> over. Well, I'm not at home anyway, but if you hear all this yeah. back, nice. I'm in Florida, so I hate to be here. <laughs> that's just so awful. It is, you know? Yeah, I feel that's get one. I feel oh, bad. I just, I just <laughs> did, but yeah. 
Where in Florida, Joe? I'm in a place south of around New Smyrna. Hmm. It's uh, right across. It's at the southern end of the Daytona Peninsula. There's nothing down. Hmm. It's pretty nice. Nice. One of my friends from high school, her mom lives in New Smyrna. So oh, that, that's, yeah. Yeah, this is this place is called Ponce Inlet. Okay. <laughs> it's nice. It's normally pretty quiet, but it, up in Daytona is bike week this week. Yeah. Three hundred thousand bikers. Oh my god! I'm not going oh. to. I'm not going to bike Daytona at all. Please don't. <laughs> There's bikers now. Yep. yep. That many? It's their an annual oh. <clears throat> get together down here. Mm. Wow. I'm not in that group, but. <laughs> Mara, did you get my voicemail? Just make sure you got that on the lights. Yes, so I'm working on getting um, both you and um, I need to do a repair on John's building too. So yes. I'm and then did get... you, um, what about extending any? I'll look at extending um, okay. and we'll see where we are. Um, Cause I do need to try to get to some of the other buildings that don't have them yet, yet first. Yeah. Um, but it shouldn't be a problem. And I can either get you the cost if, it's completely covered or we can kind of yeah. look at our options. Yeah. Okay. So Joe, technically you have a quorum already because we have our two new members on. Well, cool. And Abby so. says, Abby <clears throat> says at the moment that she's muted because she's driving her she's kids just, to school. Yep. She's dropping off at school. But, I think she's that. on. Um, and then who else are, are we expecting, Holland? Are we expecting? Yeah, we're expecting everybody else. Okay, let's wait a couple more minutes, especially if people couldn't find the link. Okay. Hello, it's Abby. Just wanted to say hi really quick. Morning, Abby. Morning. Everybody needs to get out and enjoy today and tomorrow before it starts raining for days. At least it's not snow. So, you know, that'll be. <laughs> <clears throat> That's a plus. Yeah. Joe, how long are you down there? Oh, just a few more days and we made it a quick trip down. And uh, hopefully things will get better and we can do some more traveling this summer, you know. <clears throat> I got my second shot. Oh, good. All right. Nice. That's a plug. Yes, yes, it is. Wow, I'm I'm heading to Disney World in May. I'm hoping my shot comes before then. We're on the list now because of the veterinary world. So sure. We got a few are trickling through the animal hospital getting it. So hopefully. Yeah. Well, I think every, hopefully to be maybe by June, a lot of people will be able to get it. The majority. If they want it. Right. My parents have their first shots. They're still, they've got their second scheduled. And we're supposed to be at a softball tournament in Gulf Shores in July. So we're crossing fingers that we can finally see them. Good problem. January 1, 2020. That's the last time I've seen them. Mm. Oh. Doesn't help that they're on the East Coast. No. Yeah. 
now they're doing work on this condo. Can you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll turn the volume off. <laughs> I'm not going to be in here all day. <laughs> I don't know if we want to, Fran, if we want to check on John and Holly. We can, we can catch up. We can get the minutes. Yeah, we, uh, well, I don't know if you have enough to approve the minutes. You only have three of you. Let me see who was Joe Angel. Um, I kind of need, you need at least one more. Yeah. Ideally, Holland is who you need to approve both sets of minutes. Okay. Bob, have you gone up to, are you, you're at 50% capacity right now? Yeah. Yeah. Start How's up. that balancing out with the to-go? It's it's ticking up. Things are going in the right direction. Um, feels a little more normal. But um, it's getting there. Start having them watch baseball games. Yeah, I know football's more. <laughs> yeah, people come in. I mean, the the late they they just let it let us stay open later now. So people were not coming in for Blues games because oh, because they've been so late. Just weren't coming up late at night, and uh, so now that that should help because all the Blues games are most of them are on the West Coast. So. Yeah, they just finished that West Coast stand, so they yeah. should be back I mean, home. Game, all those games start at eight thirty at nine or. I mean, people were in last bed night's was really late. Yeah. So you just have John. I just moved John over. Okay, <clears throat> we got okay. John. You're on mute. John, you're muted. I just dropped the kids at school, so I'm in the car. I probably won't talk much, so I don't get in an accident. But give me about five, and I'll be to a stable spot. You're great. This would have been one of those days where I would have been five or 10 minutes late for the meeting, you know, but I figured I could at least zoom on in. You're good. We've got someone else uh, also dropping off kids. So we're good. Um, All right. Joe, if you want to, I mean, I'm sure. sure John could at least approve, help approve minutes with just a vote. He doesn't have to yeah. make a motion. Right. So we can, uh, have the approval of the minutes for January. I'll I, uh, I vote to, I'll approve. I vote I'll, to approve. I'll second. Okay. All and right. then February. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll February. second. Okay. Well, I guess we don't have any visitors comments yet. Well, first, just go ahead and ask if you can get a vote from the four who were there. So we'll have a four to zero that you've approved the minutes and we'll have two abstentions because Ken and Abby weren't for e at, there at either of those meetings. Okay. So go ahead and do that. <clears throat> so do we have approval of the minutes for January and February? I approve. I'll approve. I approve. I approve. I vote yes. All right. Thank Official. <laughs> These Zoom meetings are different. You know? I know. You have no new, you have no visitors, random people hanging out right, in this land. Right. <clears throat> and then we have uh, on here introduction of new members. So we have Ken. Is it Crehan? Crehan, yes. Thanks, yeah. Joe. Webster yeah. University. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm at Webster University uh, and I've been there for 18 years. Uh, actually, was part of the group. That, uh, that purchased the shopping center there on Old Orchard. Uh, you know, my responsibilities at the university include um, all the real estate that we have. So, you know, when 
Mara approached me, uh, you know, I thought this was a great, uh, a great opportunity and, and hopefully we can, we can lend some, some, some help and benefit to the, to the commission. So thank you for having me and uh, sure. we'll move forward. Thank you. Great. Welcome. And I guess Abby, is she still driving? I'm still driving, but I can talk now. Okay. We have Abby uh, Colored. Culleton? Culleton, uh-huh. And from the Boulevard. Yes, I am. Thank you so much. Mara also approached me and I'm very happy she did. Thank you, Mara. Um, and I'm very excited to be a part of this group with you guys. Great. Welcome. Hey guys, I'm back at my desk at home safely. Yay. <laughs> Joe, do you want to have everyone introduce themselves to Ken and Abby so that they know who everybody is? Sure, I'll start. I'm Joe Fichter and I'm on my way retiring from the group pretty soon here. I've uh, been on it for about 20 years and it's a great group. It's a, we work hard for the, uh, for the area to, uh, for betterment in this, in this, and uh, try to promote Old Archer. And you used to be with Subaru. I used to be. I used to be with uh, Subaru and representing the uh, Karis group. They still have some property there that they're selling. So, yeah, I was with Webster Grove Subaru. I owned it for four years. So, retired. Very nice. I guess I'll go. I'm Bob Weber. I own Weber's Front Row. I've uh, been there. It's our 29th year, I think. Um, just good to be with the group and know what's going on in the area. So, appreciate it. And my name is John Barr. Uh, I own the Frisco Bar Room, uh, the Annex Coffee and Foods, and Silk Alchemy with my wife, Kelly Barr. And we own a few other properties in Old Orchard. And uh, Ken, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's a great place. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we've been there often. Good morning. I'm Angel Venagoni. I'm the hospital administrator for Webster Groves Animal Hospital. I've been there since 2007. And so, yeah, so it's nice to meet you all. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. And I'm Fran Sunicum. I support the Old Orchard uh, Business District Commission as well as the Crossroads Commission, the Old Webster Commission and the Business Development Commission. We have a couple other people that are normally here. Uh, they'll probably be joining Holland Saltzman from, uh, what's the name of the company? Novel it's Neighbor. Novel Neighbor. And uh, Steve Zielinski is the pharmacist there in Old Archer. So and we are we still that. looking for a few more members because okay. we need, Joe is retiring and needs to come off. And then I think we have at least one more opening. So two openings. We'll keep, Keep working on it. Okay. Well, we have old business, the budget. Did we finish that last month? No, we needed to do one last uh, final approval. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen on a couple different things. So first, because this will be new for Ken and new for Abby, um, I'm sharing my screen so you can kind of see a little bit of information about the budget. Um, so the, the budget, uh, normally what we do is we go through the budget and this is the 2021 budget, which is the budget year runs from July 1 to June 30th. So this is the one that will be ending in a couple months. Um, I usually put the basic information about our budget over here. Um, I do our expenses to date. I then usually put all previous year's budgets along here so that people can see what we had budgeted and what we had spent each of those various years in case we wanna make some comparisons. Uh, further along here, this is the history of the revenue that has come in, which uh, is how much you have you know, coming in each year. Um, typically it's around you know, $50,000. The last couple of years, we've had a little bit of a bump. We know that some of the bump came from the fact that St. Louis County was no longer letting Bethesda completely be a not-for-profit. And so there's additional taxes that were coming in from their property. Um, this amount that comes in each year is a combination of 
money that comes from uh, a special tax on the business license, as well as a tax on the property, which goes to uh, the budget each year. Um, and then down here, there is a beginning balance for how much is in your fund balance. So um, you have a certain amount that you have not necessarily spent. It gives us a little bit to spend on special projects and other things. And for example, last year, you all decided that it was important to do some, um, uh, the lighting on the tops of the buildings. Um, and you were able to pull a little bit more and spend or put in your budget spending more than you were bringing in that year. Um, so that's your beginning fund balance. This is usually about our projected revenue. We usually assume you're at about 50,000. Just as a reminder, last year you came in with 66,000. Um, and then I usually do sort of a current running tab of how much expenses, how much revenue has come in so far. As a reminder, your revenue that comes in, um, the business licenses aren't due until April 30th. And the taxes that come into county, if someone's late paying their taxes, that means that it's potentially late coming into the city. So we're about halfway there, which is kind of where we usually are around March. Um, by June 30th, I'll give you an update to see where we are with all of that coming in. And then last year, there were some things that you did. Um, we usually in our um, advertising budget have a few key things that you do. Um, you do a, a portion that you send over to the BDC Business Development Commission. That holiday package is matched with uh, money from all three business districts and money from the city. Um, and that goes to supporting um, different things that they do with TV ads, um, with radio, with uh, newspaper ads and other things to promote the city during the holidays. We also have a, a social media package um, that is also a match with the other business districts in the city. Um, you usually in, in years have a gazebo series that you sponsor as well as a, a payment for a coordinator to do the gazebo series. And then last year you did a building lighting um, and we decided to fund that at 100%. So we had a certain amount that had in your funds to be able to pay that 100% on each building that signed up. We also had a facade program that we really didn't focus on this year because there's just too many other things going on with businesses. And then there's usually a, a 3% increase for the salary of the parks staff that come and do um, the watering of the plants, planting the pots, bringing the pots in and out, um, doing some other things related to maintenance in the general area. So this is just a reminder of you know, what last year's budget was, where we are in, in terms of spending. Um, advertising wise, we're about halfway there because we didn't do the sponsorship of the gazebo series this year and so far hadn't done anything with uh, someone coordinating. Um, our overall area maintenance, I did get a number of buildings done, but only sort of a first phase of buildings. Novel neighbor building was done, the um, animal hospital building was done, a couple of buildings where um, the pharmacy used to be and um, uh, artistic tailoring were done and uh, the building that has um, Gorilla Street Food and the gallery was also done. So my next sort of round is trying to see what other buildings we can pick up after that. Before I move on to the draft budget for 2022, any questions about our current budget year? Okay. I'm going to stop sharing this one. I'm going to share the other budget. So I went ahead and put together a draft. I don't think there's all that much that we need to mess around with this year, um, but you guys can tell me if there's something different. Um, we usually leave $100 in miscellaneous in case something pops up that we need to take care of, uh, mailing, some special signs, some special event or something. Um, we usually th leave $300 in for operational equipment. That helps us go and make some repairs um, to, again, small things, sometimes building lighting, which would be different than the big building lighting uh, project that we're working on. Um, professional services, that helps take care of Fran's support, um, where she sends out emails, sends out things about important events, and then helps take the minutes for all of the meetings. Um, 
disposal services, that is the single stream recycling shared trash uh, dumpster that is behind the north side of the buildings, um, sort of near Weber's and um, um, Racanelli's, thank you. Um, the electricity and the water, um, those are for some of your public parking areas, the water for some of the um, sprinkler system and the electricity uh, for some of the uh, electric in those general areas, including the electric in Gazebo Park. Um, advertising, I'll go into the details of that, but I left it the same as last year um, in case you wanted to kind of keep it with, with being the same. Um, lighting, that's the parking lot lighting and the electricity for the parking lot lighting. In bold, I did what I thought we might want to potentially change. So last year we had the 20,000 in, that was to cover the building lighting. Um, what I can do is any building lighting money that we have not spent, I can bring it over as a purchase order so we can continue to spend it from last year's budget and continue to do those projects. I don't necessarily have to put it in for this year's budget. The 6,000 was what you put in last year for um, potential matching grants for facade program. Um, and we still have 6,000 in last year's budget that we haven't spent. We just didn't focus on it. There were too many other, I think more important things to focus on just keeping businesses open. Um, but we could put in the 6,000 again for next year. Any money that we don't spend in this year's budget just goes back into our balance of our fund. Um, under operating transfer out, the one thing we discussed at last month's meeting were a couple projects with the parks department. So down here, just as a reminder, I put in the same matching amount for BDC holiday package, the amount for social media, um, putting in gazebo series, thinking positively that we could have a gazebo series this year. Um, I also put in the 6,000 for the facade program. Um, the parks salaries, um, they have a 3% cost of living. So I put that in for the next year. So the overall year with the 3% would be an additional $780 for the year. Um, we talked about doing hanging baskets along orchard. That's the, they're, they're, they have some poles along there that were for banners. Um, they believe that they can get some of the lighter weight baskets on there. It would be a one-time fee of $660 to purchase the self-watering baskets, which would mean they wouldn't have to increase any hours of time for parks to be watering them. And then yearly, you'd have an additional $360 for the plants and the materials um, that they would put in those baskets. Um, so you would need to see that you'd probably have an additional 360 in future years if you purchase those baskets. So I did update this number assuming all of these numbers, um, but that's obviously something you can have a conversation about. And then just as a reminder, this big $19,000 advertising, that includes a couple of these key things that you have here. In addition, it includes ads in the Webster Kirkwood Times. Um, so it's those ads that you put in that uh, allow businesses to um, have a matching uh, fund. So the ads are not as expensive because you all put a small portion towards it. Um, and those are the ganged ads that take over an entire page. Um, so we have a series of those and we talked in, in the past years about doing some of those where we would do them every other month. So maybe, for example, if we'd been on the ball, we could have done one for Valentine's Day for February and sort of uh, had some sort of top piece that said shop Old Orchard and talked about, you know, whatever the holiday would be. Um, and so there's ways that we could kind of work with the Webster Kroger Times in doing some of those. And then what they do is then they sell the other smaller ads at a reduced cost because we are promoting and adding some money towards that. That's usually only about $200 per ad for you all to add in there. Um, and then in addition, it also is the ads that you do during the holidays. So you're usually a part of the um, shop small ad that you put in before um, Small Business Saturday. And then some of the ads you do specifically during the holidays and in the recipe uh, guide. Um, you also have some additional advertising if there's other things that you want to do. So I'm going to leave it there with 
I think this is what you wanted in, the, in here, but if there's some other numbers you want to add in. Um, oh, let me not forget. We are also looking at trash cans. So um, we're doing an accounting of where all the decorative trash cans are, trying to confirm if we need to purchase any new trash cans. And if we do, that number's pretty high. Um, it's about, I think, 1,300 a trash can. So we're trying to confirm where they all are and trying to see if some of them need to be moved to better locations. Um, so that could be something that you say you want to put in just as a as a possibility that we might need to purchase a couple additional trash cans for the district. Mark, quick question on that. Are you saying they're right there on Big Ben, those trash cans? Like is that where the, those nice black ones? Yeah. Um, I've now um, good and bad. Now that we're a little bit busier, the busier you get, the more trash there is on the street. Yeah. I've noticed they have been getting filled. There is, you know, starting to be foot traffic on nice days, hitting the three or four boutiques we have now down there. And by Monday, they're like overflowing gross. So yeah, I don't know where we would put those. Um, but I, I hear you on that one. And we probably could maybe use another one per side, I would think. Um, and so just so you know, here, I'm going to stop the share of the budget for a second. I'm going to share. Um, so for example, you guys can see this is one of them right here. Um, what we do is we have a map um, that identifies where they all are for the trash. Um, uh, I don't want to call them a supplier. The people who pick up the trash, um, we have a map that shows them where they all are that are city ones. So you can see one over here. Um, but some of them have moved over time, depending on where we thought they needed to be better located. So what we've been doing with Public Works, they are figuring out where all the trash cans are. They're going to make some suggestions of the overall map and whether we might need to order some additional ones. Old, or, uh, old Webster definitely needs to order at least four more. They have some really old, ugly ones that are the, uh, the ones that have the um, concrete with the rough stone on the outside um, that are these squares. And they want to replace those with the nicer trash cans. So <clears throat> one thing we can do is we can save on the freight shipping if we order them all at the same time. So they are putting some in their budget. And we think that the budget numbers are going to be around 1300 so that is something you can think about possibly putting in. Well, if we need, if we need them, uh, if we, if we, we can put it in the budget and if we only have to buy a couple, um, we say three is, I mean, is, do we, is that something, John, you think? Or, I'm pretty um, aware of, I pick up all the uh, Webster Kirkwood times for the district and put them in instead of letting them turn to pulp um, on the street and the red plastic becoming a uh, bird food. I pick them up for the street and put them in the trash cans. I know that we have two on each side of the street. Um, I know that there's one right there about right in front of between annex and serendipity currently. And then there's one right between civil alchemy and tie two. We probably need a third on that side and a third on the other. So I would just go off if Public Up Works wasn't already working on it, I would say we definitely need two more, one for each side, and then pull the um, one down by tie two to the other side of tie two, and then plop one in the middle somewhere around David's guitar, or the um, Edward Jones area would be good. That's my two cents. Let's respond to that. Uh, who's responsible for emptying those trash cans? So the city hires uh, a... Uh, a trash company and okay. and they um they have a map that um i moves all of the sorry i'm moving a couple people over um they have a, a map that <laughs> identifies to the trash haulers which ones are city trash cans okay well do we want to make a motion i guess we need to to it First, figure out is that, so besides that, if I add that in, um, so, and I'm, I'm going to use this as a, because I can actually kind of work on it. Um, so for um, area maintenance, I'm going to put in here um, trash cans, and I'm going to put in, uh, should I put in three? I would put three in. 
Okay, and I'm gonna assume just for the heck of it, 1300. So we've got 39. And then I'm gonna add that up here and make this 9,900. Um, because what we're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to vote on this budget. So if there's anything else you wanna change in here, I want you to make all those changes, then make a motion. Okay. If you wanna approve the budget. Okay. Anybody have any other questions on it or adds to it? So then um, the, the amount, I'm sorry, uh, the amount in the disposal service, that's what we pay to have those trash cans emptied on an no, annual. No, that is that is actually for a single stream recycling dumpster. Uh, okay, yeah, that's what you said. I'm yeah, sorry. that one's a different one. Um, so that one is a pretty large dumpster, and it's emptied uh, twice weekly, and I think it's a nine yard. Okay. And that's a shared ability so that the single stream, so any of the businesses can drop off the single stream recycling there. We tried at one point to get a second one on the south side of the street. We just don't have a good location for it. It's kind of rough. Um, so we might continue to think in the future as things develop about a, another location, but for now we're kind of at one. Okay. So um, I have a, a, a few ideas if you guys are interested. Um, for the recycling, I know, so we're right there with, right next to Rogers and Cyrano's and there's constant, like everything that's being thrown in the trash can is recyclable. Um, so I don't know if there's any place you guys can put it somewhere on our lot. I mean, I feel like that's constantly being filled with, um, with cardboard constantly. So when you say constant, which, which, what's being filled with cardboard? It's our trash can, like our dumpster out in the, with that we share with Cyrano's, Rogers and ourselves. Um, it just, I mean, it has for days, it has cardboard in it. And I've said numerous times, we should look into getting some sort of, uh, recyclable dumpster there that the community can use along with us. So I don't know if that's an idea for a second one. I would think if there's room, if yeah. you guys can but figure out a place to put it maybe. Yeah, I, I'm, I'll be in this week. I can kind of take a good look at it and see if I can find a space for it. We also have an area, it would be kind of tight though, because I'm trying to think of the community coming in and coming out. I'll look at it and see if there's an additional space. Even if we move the trash can over and put the recyclable right next to it, that might work. The other option we can have is a lot of times you can tell our recycling company to come out and look at a location and see if there's a place okay. it could fit. Um, the only tough part is going to be if it ends up one that it can't be picked up easily, you know, because there, there might be a location that seems great, but if a couple cars park, then they can't get access to it. Okay. And then we also don't want you to lose any parking spaces. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I, it's up to you guys if you want to see if they want to come out and then I mean if this is something that you guys would be interested in would I just have to talk to my landlord and make sure I don't know if she owns that I don't know how that works with you guys like if she owns that lot or not she does they own that lot um so okay. what we would have to do is get a, a permission or an easement because the other location is actually in the, the alley essentially so it, it's okay. on a city piece of property Okay. And then we would want to think through, you know, typically we want them enclosed and we'd want to think about the enclosure. So the other location that we have on the city lot has an enclosure. So we want to look at that. Okay. Um, okay. So that might be one that we might not necessarily be able to get into this budget year because okay. we probably want to work through a bunch of different things and agreements. Um, okay. And that might take a little bit longer, but it's still something that we could start working on through this year and be able to put it potentially in the following year's budget. Okay, awesome. And I, if you guys are like, hey, let's look at it, then I don't have any problem um, talking, having her, you know, okay that. I'd look into it, definitely. Yeah. And then the other thought I had, and I, I don't know, I'm, I can't visualize, I know this is a different district, but I can't visualize the trash cans down, down further. Um, the cinder kind of cinder block ones are they concrete all the way around yeah they are the old Webster ones what what if and I don't know if 
if budgets transfer. So I don't know if they ended up not getting trash trash cans if it would transfer into our budget by chance. No, none. They're but, com they're completely separate from each other. They don't. The ne neither of those tie together. Okay, I just thought I I thought it would be kind of cool maybe to submit for. Um, the community to submit artistic drawings or paintings and then they can paint on those you know what I mean have an artist paint those drawings and it's a some sort of contest to bring money to that area and they submit them for so much money and they may have a chance to have their drawing put on those trash cans so you know something that represents Webster to them so those trash cans, it, the reason why they want to get rid of them is they're broken. So it's not just oh, a, broken. Okay. yeah, the, the lids are broken. The lids keep flying off um, and they're, they're just, they're really old um, and they don't match the rest gotcha. of the trash cans. But yes, we've, we've had some conversations about um, in the past for other districts um, about painting like the electrical boxes um, mm -hmm. There's been some other conversations about things like that. And I know Webster Arts has been doing some things, so it might be worth them having some conversations for future, definitely about projects. One of the things that we do have coming up, just as a reminder to all of you, is this year they are going to, Webster Arts usually does the Plain Air uh, Festival, which is paint, basically it's Paint Webster, where you go out and stand out in the outdoors and paint something. And we usually, if someone does a painting in Old Orchard, they do have an award, a $200 award from Old Orchard to the artist who painted something in your district. Last year it got canceled. Mara, can I ask a question in reference to those trash? Is there anything about having recyclable bin? We've looked at it before. It's kind of a difficult one um, because even if we do, so right now the recycling's gotten pretty expensive to pay for. It, the, the cost keeps going up because um, once it gets just slightly contaminated, it, it the whole thing is gone. And so there's an additional fee that's been added. Um, the last couple of years, I've been able to get yours capped off without the additional fee. Um, but I, I see them raising rates again very soon. Um, so it's been a little bit tough. And the ones that are on the street, it's really hard to keep people. They, it's the first thing they see and they just throw it in there. Um, so it's a little, we can look into it. And I know Public Works had been looking at, sometimes they can get grants, <laughs> but it's tough. Well, here's, here's an interesting little fact if you just want to know. So Walt Disney World did a study and it takes about between um, 30 and 50 steps is why Walt Disney World is pretty much so clean is because they did the study to know how many steps are between before somebody will throw something away. So if that's ever a ever an idea of kind of the, the prospect that it might help. But OK, I was just curious because, you know. On the on the recycling side of things, it would it'd be yeah. nice, but I get it. So what we can do is let's put on our agenda to look at the idea of other recycling locations. I will still ask if there's a possibility of doing some recycling containers in the district. Um, I'll try to see if I can get some answers back on that. Um, and then we're putting in for three trash cans. Anything else you wanna add into budget? We're done with banners, right? We are. You guys have four banner designs now, and all of your banners have been purchased. Cool. And we don't have to talk about colors or any of that stuff. <laughs> and whether it says Old Orchard or Webster <laughs> Groves. All right. <laughs> That's not funny, Joe. That's not funny. <laughs> that <laughs> was were, months of were, meetings. Those were hours. Oh, gosh. Gosh. All right, well, uh, do we have, a, I guess, uh, Mara, should we make a motion to uh, approve the budget as stated here? If I could, and then let me make sure, I know we've got one call caller, is that? Um, That's me. Steve? That's Steve. Awesome, yeah. okay, so Steve Hi, is Steve. on and Holland is now on. So just FYI, I think you have everyone today. My gosh. That's great. 
Well, do, uh, does anyone want to make a motion to approve the budget as it's posted here? I'll make a motion to approve the budget as it's posted. Second. I'll second. I'll second. All in wait favor? A minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got. I couldn't tell who said there were more than one person that said second, and I couldn't tell. It was Stephen John. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, that's Aye. finished. We're finished. Oh, good job, everybody. Have a great day. Oh, 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 we're not no, finished. No. We're finished oh. with the budget. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm no, getting excited. Not over. <laughs> and you can go if you really want to, but we, we have a couple quick things to get through. All right. <laughs> Okay, we have uh, old, any old business other than the budget? That Just the budget. Uh, um, well, okay. Sorry, let me really quickly streetscape. Um, on our um, March 16th city council meeting, they have on the agenda to um, assign, they already did bids on your streetscape. So they finally have sign off by MoDOT and we can uh, get a date set to start construction on your streetscape. Um, and they're going to approve the contractor that has been picked from the bids. Um, and we are thinking about, and we will let you know, Holland, as soon as we know, there's a possibility we're gonna to try to start at your end of the street um, and move our way the other direction. Um, some of the reasons for that is that the very other end of the street is the old Subaru lot, which is still up in the air of what, what's going in there. And if we have a new business going in there, there's potentially some we don't want the streetscape to be done and then they're tearing it out again for the new business. So we're trying to kind of tie some construction schedules together. So we are possibly gonna start at your end. And if we do, I promise you won't have to text me every day because I'm going to stay on top of them on letting them know, letting you know what's going on. So soon, very, very soon construction streetscape okay so that's it for old business all right new business uh gazebo series i did talk to uh dale and he's game he's he's on board i hope fran are you gonna be doing the same this this year you know sure. we're probably looking at what do you think uh at least a couple of months from now to have a meeting maybe i mean we can't start on this for a while uh but Dale could set up, try to line up some bands for, you know, maybe midsummer, summertime. I think what Bob Weber even threw out the idea of maybe even oh. the later we push it, the more likely it would happen. And maybe even the better weather we'll have to enjoy. Uh, right. And I like I liked that idea. Well, September, October are beautiful are, you know, for being outdoors. So being a hundred potential of 105 you know sure maybe start well, the end of can... august and go through september do six of them maybe so okay why don't we we'll, we'll set up a meeting and try to get uh get that but dale is he's available and fran's available so as soon as we can get we need to talk about that probably in the next month or so and uh and just, well, then we can get... just remember for jazz festival um they are also still thinking about trying to have that happen. So maybe you shift your timing to end the weekend, maybe before Jazz Festival. And that's possibly. September? Yeah, when it's is September, it? usually, hold on, September. It's like the 18th or 19th. It's the yeah. third Saturday. Hold on, September 18th. Well, if it's a Saturday, we could still do Friday, couldn't we? Because uh, sure. maybe that would add to it. You could. Mm. It'd be like having the uh, the gazebo series stage at the festival. You know how to do those side stages, Bob? We could be like that up in Old Orchard. So Weber, we can... Bob, Bob, so if you uh, started, so August, if you did the 7th, the 14th, the 21st, 28th, that gets you through the four weeks in August, and then did the 4th and the 11th, that would lead you up to the weekend before the 18th. 
or you could shift and yes, John, you could work with Joe, you guys could work with Joe Rath and try to see if you could overlap. It's a little difficult going between the two, especially when they have this, the multiple stages. Sure. It's not as easy for someone to walk over one block versus. Maybe a city can rent us their um, trolley. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> Pay a million dollars. Well, like they do. <laughs> well, we'll get together on that in the next month, I guess. I need to call Claire because she needs to get the uh, get that checkbook taken care of. I think signatures on there need to change, and uh, so we'll try to set something up in the next month. And anybody that wants to be involved is more than welcome to be involved. We we need all, all the help we can get. Uh, but to give you a background that. Fran takes care of this of the social media and the promotion, and Dale takes care of the stage and the music and contracting the the, uh, the artists. And uh, we did get money back from Kim Massey when she passed away. They sent a they sent a check back to us, so that was nice uh -huh. on a deposit. Well. On that note, too, we did increase our budget last year. It was going to be the biggest and best ever because we were going to try to get a couple bigger names. I think Kim Massey was one of them. Yep. And I think we we're going to get Jake's leg, both yep. who are kind of several thousand dollars and bigger draws. Um, so right. um, with our new Bethesda money, maybe that can help um, draw some more people or something. Well, Keep that or, or not even increase it. Just do what we were going to do last year have a couple bigger draws again. I'll get in touch with you. I'll send something out to everybody on this list and uh, let you know when we're going to have a meeting. And, uh, and, you know, it's kind of all up in the air with, like Dale said, uh, with the city and the county having their own restrictions on, but hopefully that opens up a little more by summer and, and we can plan. The city has no, we, we just tell you to follow county. Right, I meant the city of St. Louis because he does stuff for the city of St. Oh, Louis. Oh, got it, okay. So that's the gazebo. Uh, <laughs> BDC update. John, do you want to give a BDC update? So John kindly um, has added I, himself to I, the BDC. Yeah, I did. Um, however, uh, and it was good. It was my first one. I kind of just sat back like I did for the first six months to a year on this commission and kind of listened and kind of saw how things work. Um, I honestly didn't pick up that much on how things work. Um, and I don't know what I do have. I'm actually looking at my notes. Um, I know I do know more from the BDC working group uh, meeting. That seems to have more, um, I don't know, it, it, our goals are to bring awareness to all the businesses in Webster, to increase engagement of the businesses into the Webster events um, and into just Webster, different things that Webster does for marketing in general. Um, another, the third goal is to unite all of the business districts. Um, we spent a good amount of time talking about maybe some type of uh, revamping of Explore Webster Groves that would allow for people to maybe to begin to more easily see and know what how business, what businesses are there. Uh, we talked a little bit about the businesses that people don't know anything about. It's easy to see the businesses that are in your face in our districts. Um, but there's businesses that are um, off the beaten path um, and kind of hiding in some of the neighborhoods. There's businesses in homes. And so there was talk of possibly even setting up the business license application. I think it was the city manager. I forget who her name was. Do you remember that, Fran? Yeah. Dr. Peoples. Yeah. No, she talked was talking about, about um, Joanne J Jadali oh. talking about revamping the business license to get more information from the businesses. So that you could more easily categorize it um, so people could go on and then we'd be able to maybe do some marketing and social media that would allow for people to almost like a yellow pages even and see what businesses are out there. We, you know, um, so that's just the beginning talks of ways to get all of the businesses seen. And I think probably later ones, we'll start to talk about how to get more businesses involved into the different events in the different districts when there are events, and then how to get the varying districts 
to coordinate their events together, which um, Fran, that just made me remind me of an email you sent me after that meeting. Um, just that, for instance, why doesn't Old Orchard do their Christmas event the same day as Old Webster's event? This is something we've talked to in the past. Therefore, we're not competing against each other. We're competing against Kirkwood and other cities to where people come to Webster on that day. They don't come to Old Webster. They don't come to Old Orchard. They don't come to Crossroads. They come to Webster on that day. And we talked about the ways to get the districts all in together and working together. So I think those are some kind of some of the things that are gonna be coming up there from those meetings. And I'll keep you guys posted. Fran, you can always help jog my memory. It's a little, okay. it's a little rusty uh, the last few months. So you can chime in and correct me wherever. Thank you. Okay, I will do that. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, city update. I know we're getting tight on time, so I'm gonna be really quick. Um, if you just look at the February minutes, um, same updates on a lot of the new businesses, Wingstop, DD Mao, Union Bagels, Le Macaron, Amy's Cake Pop Shop and Boozy Bites. Um, they're all still working with us on uh, opening. Um, Lona's Little Eats, um, they are postponing again. They were supposed to be on for the March plan commission meeting. They're now postponed to April. They're still working through some ideas and whether they want to do the drive-through option or not. Um, and I know that um, they've extended their uh, contract on the property. I know some of you have seen that there's a new sign up because I'm sure that if that falls through, they wanna make sure they've got a backup of someone who could go in that location. Um, we are we have construction drawings in for the, um, the urgent care, um, which is out of your district, but still at the far end of your district. Um, and uh, the construction will start on that actually probably quite soon. Um, we are working, uh, the city has started their new fire station on uh, Elm. Uh, in the south side of the city. So construction started for the new fire station. A um, Couple other things, some of you probably have seen, uh, there's a lot of work being done for along Big Bend, they did your the new water line and they tried to get that done before the construction started on the north side of the streetscape. Uh, just FYI, they're gonna be starting quite soon on a new water line on Elm. Ugh from Whoa. Lockwood to Big Bend. Ooh. Oh my, I'm surrounded. Yes, wow. um, in addition, they're still finishing up on Glendale by the rec center. Um, and we still have the construction going on for the sixth grade, uh, the addition to the middle school that's at moving the sixth grade with the seventh and eighth grade. So there's a lot of construction going on. There's a lot really happening, so just be aware, we'll try to get as much news out as we can about all of that. But the um, Elm should be starting in the next couple of weeks. Um, they're not gonna have it completely shut down, but it's gonna be down to like one lane and they're doing it a block at a time. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that all phases out. Um, we do have and moved forward from the plan commission, our residential code amendments. They voted on them at their March plan commission meeting. We're gonna be moving those to our um, city council meeting in April. So there'll be a public hearing in April about those code amendments. In addition, we're about to advertise for some new code amendments that will slightly impact your district. Um, we're looking at amending the code right now. Old Webster is mainly zoned D commercial. You all are primarily zoned C commercial. <laughs> And then there's a number of lots in both properties that are zoned PC planned commercial. So for example, the boulevard is PC planned commercial. It has very specific list of uses and what can happen. Um, the bank, um, uh, the Commerce Bank is a PC planned commercial. John's property with um, the annex and Frisco Barroom is PC planned commercial. Um, when someone wants to do multifamily, either above commercial or as multifamily sort of behind or on the edges of your district, they have to completely rezone their property. If they're in a D, they can get it as a conditional use permit. If they're in a C, they have to completely rezone to planned commercial. 
what we found is that it's it's not it's a natural location that if you're going to put multifamily, you want it closer in the density to where you already have commercial, where there's more walkability, where there's bus lines and other things like that. So what we are looking at doing is changing the multifamily to be a permitted use in both your C and D districts, but with a very specific set of regulations. So they could come in and potentially go in above um, some first floor retail, um, which I think is something that would be encouraged in different areas. Um, and so we are gonna have a public hearing open in April to talk about multifamily and its inclusion as a permitted use in both C and D districts. It's in conformance with what our comprehensive plan says. It says to, if you're going to build multifamily, build it close into your commercial areas. Um, and so that will be a public hearing and we'll um, try to keep you informed in case you want to come and listen and speak. Um, so we have that going on. Um, I feel like I'm missing something else. Oh, proposition one. Um, I will be sending some additional information out about prop one in case you have any questions about that one. Um, and there's a, a there's cards that are available that we've been giving out to two residents that help explain the fact that it, it's it's actually supposed to help our local brick and mortar businesses um, to keep people purchasing local and in Missouri and um, it really only applies it doesn't apply to smaller things um, that um, would be purchased like people are saying well well what if I go buy my you know my soccer shorts online it doesn't apply to things like that it's things that are over two thousand dollars like large scale purchase of furniture that you could have bought locally and are instead purchasing out of of, of state um, and then it adds an additional uh, tax on it. So I'll send that link out. I'm, I'm gonna send it to all of my business districts as well as all my other uh, districts. So I'll send that out quite soon. Um, and that's coming up next month at the April election. Thank and on, uh, on top of that, we have available counter cards for those prop one that if you would like some, I can bring them to you. You just need to send me an email or a text and tell me. Thanks, Fran. I think that's everything. And I know Ken and Abby, we this is a, a we're inundating you with eight million things at once. If either of you want to call and get a little bit more of like how we work, what's different between our budget, how the different budgets work, and things like that, I'm happy to chat with you guys. And Abby, I know I owe you a phone call for something else anyway. Anyone else have any things they were thinking? Oh, and I know there's one other new business coming and they just haven't turned anything in yet, but we have another new restaurant coming in at Yorkshire. Okay. Uh, the next meeting's on April 13th and we probably are gonna need to have a new vote for a new chairman, I guess, and uh, vice chairman, switch these things around. Hopefully next meeting. So you guys that want to run, get your posters out in front of your house. And, uh... <laughs> Fran, can you add that to the agenda? I can do that. Thank you. So, and John, okay. if you don't make the meeting, you will be president. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, and I'll, I'll get in touch with you about the meeting. If anybody wants to come, we'll probably meet at Weber's like we normally do, I guess. And uh, for the gazebo and there again we you guys are all welcome hope you can join us with that and uh, i guess that's it we have a motion to adjourn i'll make a motion okay i'll second second, that's it. second. Third. Right. good to see everyone Colin. <laughs> Colin gets it bye 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 all good to see you see you guys, see you guys. Let me get out of this.